25th Sunday in Ordinary Time, Year A, True Happiness. Today's Gospel passage is on the parable of the workers in the vineyard. I'd like to focus our attention on only one verse of today's Gospel parable. And it is said by the landowner, after the landowner gives everyone a just wage. But it's the same. He gives the same wage to everybody, whether they're hired in the beginning or at the end of the day. And this causes those who are hired at the beginning of the day who had worked more hours to be upset and angry, especially at the landowner. And he tells them, are you envious because I am generous? As Brant Petrie observes, the little Greek translation of that English word envy, are you envious, is, is your eye bad? And then, because I am good. So, is your eye bad is the Greek literal translation. And in our English translation for today's Mass is envious. St. John, in his first letter, uses that expression of a bad eye or evil eye in the context of distinguishing different types of temptations. And he describes three types of temptations. One is lust of the flesh, the second one is lust of the eyes, and the third is pride of life. So the lust of the flesh, an example of that, is a temptation to gluttony, a temptation to eat too much, and then to experience pleasure too much from the concept, from by eating too much. What is the lust of the eyes? The lust of the eyes is I look around and I see someone has something that I don't, and I lust after it. I want it, even if I don't have an, act, an actual right to it. I want it, and if I don't get it, I feel sad, disappointed, and I feel angry. What is the cure for envy and the fruits of envy, sadness and anger? Bishop Barron gives us an answer, and the answer might surprise us. This is the answer. Bishop Barron states, the answer is Christ crucified. Christ crucified is the answer. As Bishop Barron says, look at Christ crucified, love what he loved, despise what he despised, and I guarantee you will be happy. Direct quote from Bishop Barron. Bishop Barron also says this, the cross, Jesus crucified, is a picture of a happy man, a picture of a happy man. Why is that the case? Well, Bishop Barron distinguishes different types of prophets, mainly true prophets and false prophets. True prophecy is what we see on the cross. False prophecy, what is that? False prophecies of prophets abound in this world. They tell us and tempt us that if you get more money, if you get more power, if you get more pleasure, you get more honor, more titles, recognition, Eventually, you'll be completely happy. And it never happens. It's like drinking salt water, and the more I drink it, the thirstier I get, and the more disappointed I am. And then I have this false expectation, well, if I just drink a little more, then maybe I'll be quenched. And it never does quench us. No amount of money, power, pleasure, honor will ever satisfy our hearts, and we can't bring them with us after we die. Jesus, as the true prophet on the cross, boldly teaches us in his body and in his words he says on the cross that happiness cannot be found in those created realities of money, power, pleasure, and honor. But often we are deceived by the false prophets, and the result is constant disappointment and then constantly wanting, madly wanting more and more and more, and then becoming more upset, more nervous, becoming afraid of losing what we little we have, knowing that eventually we will, because we come into this world naked, and we'll go back from to our Creator naked, without a possession. This never-ending pursuit of happiness in this life will always be frustrating. Jesus on the cross teaches us another type of happiness, the happiness of eternal life, the happiness of accepting our created reality. 
accepted our created reality that our hearts, our minds, our bodies can only be fulfilled in a deep sense, an eternal sense in God. Happiness is participation in the happiness of Jesus. And Jesus on the cross with his arms out like this, welcoming everyone to be a member of his family, these of his eternal family, teaches us that happiness lies in relationship. Because Jesus is pure relation, as the second person of blessed Trinity, spoken by the Father in the love of the Holy Spirit. Happiness is right relationships. Happiness is when I get my right relationship with God first, correct? And then with, with myself, and then with my brothers and sisters, and all of creation. And I stop envying. I stop wanting more than what I currently have, and I have sufficient. In this world, what is essential is becoming more relational if we want to be happy. And when we become more relational, we start developing a culture of giving and receiving, a culture of gratitude, and this culture of exchange, as some people have described it, is only possible when we're not excessively attached to what we own, and I don't excessively desire what other people's own. But when I cling on to what I own, and when I envy what other people's have, it's not possible to really have a culture of exchange, of giving and receiving gifts. And the result in a possessive cling society that people cling on to what they have and envy what their neighbors have, and I don't, the fruits of that are grudges, resentments, hatreds, and even warfare. May we learn and may we repeat from Jesus' last words on the cross, which is also a recipe for happiness, an essential ingredient for happiness. Jesus says, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Lord Jesus, give us the grace to let go of what we cling on to and what we cling on to since this only makes us sadder and sadder, more frustrated. Today, may we let go of our possessiveness by participating in your perfect act of divine mercy on the cross, a true sign of happiness and the true sign of freedom, eternal freedom. God bless.